The first lesson is taken from the second chapter of the book of Genesis, the creation of man and woman. When the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, he formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east, in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. And the Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat it of it, you will surely die. The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I'll make a helper suitable for him. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep, and while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib and he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. Thanks be to God.
The second lesson is taken from the third chapter of the book of Genesis. Man and woman fall from grace. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say, You must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say, You must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the, gar- in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. You will, you will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the, the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put in here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate it. The Lord God said to Adam, Because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree, without tree about which I command you, you must not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil you will eat of it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you are taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. Thanks to be God. Thanks be to God.
The third lesson is taken from the ninth chapter of the book of Isaiah. Isaiah foretells the birth and kingdom of Jesus Christ. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Thanks be to God.
The fourth lesson is taken from the fifth chapter of the book of Micah. Micah foretells the glory of Bethlehem. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me, one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. Therefore, Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor gives birth and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the, name of the, in the name of the majesty of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be their peace. Thanks be to God.
The fifth lesson is taken from the first chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke. The angel Gabriel salutes the Blessed Virgin Mary. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this may be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. Thanks be to God.
The sixth lesson is taken from the second chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke. St. Luke describes the birth of Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Thanks be to God.
The seventh lesson is taken from the second chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke. The shepherds visit the baby Jesus. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to men on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. Thanks be to God.
The eighth lesson is taken from the second chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew. The wise men are led by the star to Jesus. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all of the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet had written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the wise men secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another way. Thanks be to God.
Please stand. The ninth lesson is taken from the first chapter of the Gospel according to St. John. St. John unfolds the mystery of the Incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, at Christmas we remember your coming among us as a vulnerable child, laid in a borrowed bed, but worshipped and adored by strangers and angels. May we shine as lights to the hope and joy you bring, that when Christmas comes we may rejoice to sing of your love and salvation. Amen. And may the humility of the shepherds, the faith of the wise men, the joy of the angels, and God's pe the peace of the Christ child be God's gift to you this Christmas and always. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Wasn't that beautiful? Um, we have resisted the urge to clap throughout our service this evening, and the Dean has very kindly invited us to show our appreciation now. of thanks please if I may to the children first and foremost uh, for those reading and those performing this evening I'm sure you'll agree they've done a fabulous job uh, to our staff team uh, Mr Dobbins, Miss Davis, Mrs Evans, Mr Barron, Mr Rees and of course our staff choir beautiful to see them all performing together actually this evening so a huge thank you to those and also for the logistical part of this evening's service. Thank you for your patience as we've moved so many instruments and performers back and forth. Um, and of course, to the cathedral. It really is wonderful to be back here to celebrate this service this evening. To Ben Teague, our chorister, and of course, to the Dean. And thank you uh, for attending and for your support this evening. And it just falls to me to wish you a very Merry Christmas. Thank you. <laughs> 